asking the, the driver about his documentation. They, he pulled everybody outside and started asking us questions like, where are you from? And I said, I am from Phoenix. No, but before that, where are you from? Like, before that. Like, how, how are you going to know that I'm not from Phoenix? Uh, I was speaking English and pretty much I started defending my rights because thanks to the Arizona Dream Act Coalition, I had had some uh, workshops on how to defend my rights. And I told them, I, I can give you my name, my date of birth, I can show you my school ID to uh, identify myself. And he just kept asking more questions and he said, if you give me more information, I'm going to have to call ICE. And that's when pretty much uh, I decided that I was going to remain in silence and I asked if I was un under arrest. And they said, you are under indefinite, indefinite detention. And so they took us to, uh, this was in Navajo County. So it's not here, but um, I, I spent the night in the jail and then I was taken into um, a detention center. But uh, it was in DHS still, so I didn't go to another jail. But the reason why I always share my story is because um, it's, it's so important for the community to know their rights uh, or to share to other people the importance of defending their rights. Um, because we can stop, uh, I don't know, like in my case, even though I defended my rights, I was still taken into the system. I fought my case for two years, but thanks to the prosecutorial discretion, my case was dismissed, was completely terminated. I'm sorry. Um, but now I'm in, back in the same place. My case was, was canceled because I showed good moral, moral character. But now I am still in the fear of being separated from my family. I can't drive, I can't work. and. It, it's just like in limbo. It's still the same situation. Yesterday we received the news that President Obama made a decision uh, to stop the deportations of all dreamers, so young people who would qualify for the DREAM Act. And this would actually help me because if I can apply for a work permit, then I would be able to at least contribute more to the society, to the country that I love so much. So pretty much I, I don't know if you Let me know if I'm not yelling loud enough. 
Um, hi, my name is James Duff Lyle. I'm a staff attorney with the ACLU of Arizona. Um, and I just want to say a little bit, for those of you who haven't heard um, as much about conditions in Pinal County Jail, um, I know many of you have, but um, you know, the ACLU receives a lot of letters from people who are detained in Pinal County Jail. And over the past few years, we've done a lot of documentation um, with people who are detained uh, in Pinal County Jail and have met with a number of people who have been there for a long time. Um, and we also went on a tour, um, some ACLU attorneys uh, went on a tour with uh, PCJ uh, officials and ICE officials uh, in January. And uh, out of those uh, interactions and that tour and some of that documentation over the last few years, we compiled sort of a, a long list of, of grievances and uh, description of the conditions that people face in Pinal County Jail. Uh, and last Tuesday, we submitted a letter to the head of ICE along with a number of uh, other government officials demanding that they release uh, the detainees from Pinal County Jail because of the unconstitutional and illegal conditions there and conditions that are uh, really blatantly um, in violation of ICE's own detention standards. Um, so just to say a few things about some of those conditions, um, one of the worst things that we know about uh, PCJ is that people who are detained there do not get to go outside. Um, there are people there who I met with who have been there for five years or longer who have not gone outside uh, except to go to immigration court. Many of them haven't even been to immigration court in a very long time. So literally years without seeing um, the out of doors. Uh, there is an exercise room that consists of a large concrete room with a small window in it with um, chain link um, wiring mesh um, that constitutes outdoor recreation space. Um, and the sun shines through that window uh, about one hour a day. And, and that, is, that is what people experience as, as the out of doors, uh, in many cases for years on end. Um, that, is, that is, in our view, illegal um, and, and also in violation of ICE's detention policies. Um, another big problem we saw is people are being denied uh, contact visits with family members. People who are detained here for a very long time can go months and years without having contact visits with their family members, some of whom come from very far away to see their detained loved ones. And although ICE will say, oh, if people ask us, we will arrange for a contact visit, ICE or the PCJ officials really do whatever they want. They don't, in a lot of cases, allow people to visit with their loved ones. What they, what they do is uh, family visits take place over a video, a video screen and a telephone. So people will travel from a very long way away and then sit across from a TV monitor and communicate with their loved one by phone. And there's really no reason for that other than um, that's how PCJ wants to do it. It's, uh, it's not necessary, it's not a security reason, no matter what they say, uh, to the contrary. Um, another problem is just very unsanitary and inhumane conditions in the jail. People get food on dirty trays with bugs and twigs and sticks and, and rocks in their food. People get their laundry bag that is dirty and torn and tattered. People are subject to lockdown, frequent confiscation of um, the food that they buy at exorbitant rates at the commissary. Um, very punitive conditions and also really abusive uh, treatment for the guards by just about everyone we spoke to. That was the number one complaint. Other than not getting to go outdoors, was just being treated horribly um, and unnecessarily um, inhumanely by, by the guards in PCJ. Um, so, I mean, these things are have been reported for years by a lot of people. It's, it's pretty consistent. Um, so there's no question this is going on. And it really stands in stark contrast to the Obama administration's promises to create a humane, a truly civil and humane uh, detention system, which was promised years ago. Um, and yet you still have 400 people in you know, some of the worst conditions that anybody can face in a prison um, in that building over there. Um, so we submitted this letter on Tuesday, again to ICE, uh, demanding that they um, take action to address those conditions or to release people. There are only 400 people detained in PCJ. Really, it wouldn't be very hard to, at a minimum, transfer them to somewhere 
more consistent with the law and ICE's um, uh, own promises. Um, and uh, if they don't do that, um, there may come a time when we will file a lawsuit uh, to force them to do that. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's part of the ICE out of PCJ campaign as well. Um, you can find out more about, uh, you can read that letter that we submitted on Tuesday and you can find out more about the campaign on our website, the ACLU of Arizona website. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, and, and lastly, I want to introduce Marco who's going to share some of his experiences um, from inside PCJ. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Okay, uh, thanks for, for the invitation. My history is probably the same one. Okay. Uh, I was in detention for seven years with the immigration. Two years in this building. Okay. Yes. I will talk more about this building. Uh, everything you say is true. Okay. Thank you for work. Thank you for cooperation. And you lock it down for any reasons. You don't have any hygiene. You don't have any sanitary in the food. You find the rocks. You find the bugs. You survive everything. In the water, you find. Uh, more, more, more. Uh, it's the is very, very bad. Uh, the very, very bad. The officers is not having, it's not having training for, for work for the, for the, the for the immigration people. You know, is all the time you subject for the, 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 the officials about fuertes, gritar, uh, is talking very, very good persons. Uh, the yard is outside. You don't have the yard for most two years. Walk in the small, small places. You don't have the the the, the sun, you know, skin, you have to feel the sun, you skin. Uh, the conditions in PCJ is very, very terrible. Uh, probably you receive the letters, I made mean, more than 500 letters for some people. Uh, yeah, the conditions in PCJ is very terrible. Uh, you have discrimination, about uh, you see discrimination, you see uh, locked down in time. Thank you.
are not publishing yet, and I won't tell you, honestly, because I don't remember it, but it will go live on Tuesday. Um, and we'll have a soft launch on Monday if the decision on SB 1070 comes down on Monday. And we need volunteers to staff the hotline. So we'll have 15 phones and 15 opportunities from 12 to 8. So if any of you can donate some time between 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday to help answer questions. A lot of people are going to call just because they want to know what's going on. A lot of people are going to call with questions about when it's going to go into effect, what's going on, how will it impact them in their communities. And a lot of people are going to call to report racial profiling and police abuse. And we want to make sure that we can document all of those calls. <coughs> so if you have any time, um, you want bilingual folks on the phone. But if you're not bilingual, don't worry. You can help us out with data entry and with going out into the field to help people, dropping off forms, helping people in that way. So if you can donate any time in the next couple of weeks, please give me your email address before you leave and I'll send you all of the information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.